And next we'll do our RCA on the other end of this cable. So we're going to go ahead and open the package here. Put our knife back in the holder. Open the package. And see what we have for parts here. We're going to find a couple different things. We're going to find two different size little uh, string reliefs here that go out the back. We're going to find the connector itself. We're going to find the strain relief, and this is actually the shell. The way this is going to go together is kind of like a half shell or clamshell arrangement here. And like many other connectors, there are little serrations here in the back. And for me to be able to test fit this or get an idea of how much jacket I'm going to strip back, I want to make sure that outer jacket of the cable is actually going to be under that strain relief. So I'm not going to be removing too much jacket in this case as this goes in. So not a whole lot of jacket. So let's go ahead and prepare our cable here. Uh, we're going to need a couple of things. Now I mentioned there were two different little strain reliefs here, two different sizes. Which one would I use? Well I'm dealing with a very small diameter cable, so I'm going to use the smaller of the two little springs. And the way this is going to go together is the spring is actually going to fit inside the shell here and come out the back. And then when we assemble it, the RCA connector itself is actually going to screw, or the shell is actually going to screw onto the connector itself. So we're going to go ahead and put this assembly on our cable. And then like everything else that we're going to do, we're going to put some heat shrink on. And then we can begin to strip back the jacket. Now one of the things, as we begin to test fit this assembly here, is I want to make sure that the jacket is under the serrations here for the strain relief. So really in this particular case, I'm not going to be removing much jacket. I can do a couple of different things here. Uh, I can, to make things a little easier, go ahead and remove a little more jacket than I need to. And then I can cut the conductors to length. So we're going to pull off the outer jacket. We can see the nylon here. and clip that off in a way. Here's our drain wire and we'll go ahead and twist that together. Here's our foil shield that we're going to remove. And that came off pretty easily. Okay, but now we have three conductors. Well, actually two conductors and a drain more properly, but I only have a place for two conductors here on the connector itself. So I'm going to use my red and my drain wire. What do I do with the black? Well, if for whatever reason the connector changes in the future, or the piece of gear, or both changes, I may need that black wire in the future. I could cut it off, but for changes later on, I'm going to go ahead and fold this back. And what's going to happen later on when we bring our heat shrink in is it's actually going to go beneath the heat shrink. So if we ever modify the system later on, that conductor will be there and ready for us. All right, so I have my drain wire and my conductor, and I know the drain wire is going to land down here in the bottom, so really I can begin trimming things to about that length there. Keeping my finger over the other side of the cutter so I don't have pieces flying unexpectedly. And the shield's going to go down below, and that looks pretty close there, doesn't it? So how much of this jacket do I strip off? Well, as I put it in the cup, I find that I'm going to be taking about that much jacket off. So let's go ahead and take that off. And I can actually trim the drain wire up a little bit too. All right, let's finish preparing our wire here by tinning these leads. Make sure that's twisted together well. So we're going to put this in the vise to hold it. We'll take the iron out of the holder, clean it with the sponge, and again, tin the tip. And that's just the rosin flux, that's what the smoke's from. So we're going to put the iron to the back of the conductor and flow the solder onto the wire. And we'll do it for both. Okay, so our wire is ready. Let's go ahead and prepare our conductor. I'm sorry, prepare our connector. We've done the conductor, haven't we? Now I'm going to work from bottom up here. So I'm going to land some solder here down in the bottom, and then I'm going to put some solder here in the cup. 
So we clean our iron. We tin the tip. Oh, let's go ahead and do the cup first. I'm laying the iron across the cup and then just putting the solder in the cup itself. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom part here. Now that slipped on me a little bit. Okay, make sure the iron is clean and tinned. And now we can go ahead and begin to assemble the conductor. That's going to land down at the bottom, and then we're going to put the red in the cup. We clean off our iron, make sure the tip is tinned, and we're going to go ahead and begin with the shield connection. We're going to lay that in the bottom and let it cool and not move it as it cools. And now I'm going to pre-position the center conductor here a little bit so as I get the solder in the cup hot, I can just work it right on in. So I'm putting a little bit of a bend into it so I can land it in the cup. All right, take our iron out of the holder Tin it up slightly, and let's see if we can finish our termination here. Work it in, keep it still as it cools. Make sure our iron is cleaned and tinned before we put it back in the holder. We can go ahead and bring the heat shrink up now, and we'll cover the black conductor with that. bring our heat gun over. Let's go ahead. Let's finish our assembly. Let's see, where'd our barrel go? Should be on our cable already. And it slid down a little ways here. Here's our little half shell. And that's going to fit together just like that. So we bring up our strain relief. And you can see here, this is actually conical inside here and it's going to fit up against that strain relief. And let's bring the... Sometimes these shells, little shells slide all the way down the cable. So we're going to bring it up and over and just screw it together like that. And that's our RCA connection. And before we put it in our installation, we'll go ahead and test it and we'll be good to go.